So let's talk about organizational behavior. More specifically, does leadership basically set the behavior for the rest of the employees in an organization? I think it does. I think it does in more than one way, and I'm going to explain what I mean. Last year, we had this news where one of the banks, I think it was Wells Fargo, basically found out that a lot of the employees were creating fake accounts using money from people who were already <laughs> you know, customers of Wells Fargo, using their money to create tons of fake accounts. The reason they did it is because upper management basically set these goals on them that were unrealistic, but they said they had to keep creating this because they were traded and they needed to make sure that they were showing these profits. So they were creating these, these accounts and it was all fake. And it went all the way up to the top where the guy who was the CEO said, well, I didn't know they were doing that. And then they found out he did know they were doing that. And this wasn't anything that was brand new, by the way. This had been going on for years. And so he lost his job. Some of these other people lost their job, but a lot more fought back saying, hey, wait, we had to do this because you told us to do this. You put this pressure on us. And a lot of other people were losing their jobs. And that's horrible. And you still want to say, no, you know what? You employees really messed up because what you did was illegal. So you can't say that these other people, you know, prompted you to do something illegal. Yet, I understand part of the conundrum they were under because that happens all the time where you have leaders who put unrealistic expectations on their employees. I'm in an interesting business sometimes in healthcare where there are tons of accounts to work. People, most people don't know this, but there could be literally tens of thousands of accounts to work. And you may have maybe five or 10 people who are trying to work tens, and thousands, tens of thousands of accounts. It's unrealistic. It can't be done. And then you go to them and they say, we need you to push harder. We need you to do this, whatever. It just can't be done. There's no way. You don't have enough manpower. So what you have is you have some people who will basically skirt. I don't want to say they skirt the rules, but I'll say they do some lazy stuff. In essence, if you have a bill that wasn't paid, they'll just keep rebilling it and rebilling it and rebilling it. And it's going to keep getting rejected because they haven't taken any time to research it. They haven't taken any time to maybe pick up a phone and call anyone. They haven't looked at any of their data. They're just kicking it out there because there's so many claims they can't, they can't handle it. So that's one way where coming from leadership, it really messes up everything else. The other way is basically in behavior. For instance, if you have a person in a smaller business, maybe has three or four employees, and he's kind of a nasty person, <laughs> we'll just say it that way, the employees are going to pick up on that. They're going to say, well, you know what? This is the guy in charge. And if he can talk to customers like that, or he can talk to us like that, then we should be able to talk to everyone else like that. And that's not really how business works. Customer service is a big deal. If you're alienating your potential customers, they're not going to come back. I don't care what Seinfeld had with the soup Nazi. <laughs> Most of the time, a lot of those people aren't going to come back. And maybe you can find a core of people who will accept your behavior but the rest of them are not going to do it. So there is this trickle down that actually works in business that doesn't work in finances. I'm sorry to say that, but you know, let's just tell the truth. Trickle down economics doesn't work. It's never worked. However, trickle down leadership definitely works. If the CEO of the organization doesn't know how to communicate to the people below them, those people don't know how to uh, communicate to the people who re uh, report to them, and everything falls apart. It just doesn't work. You can have certain departments where the leaders are able to overcome the rest of it, but you don't see that happen all the time. As a matter of fact, it's rare that that happens. And you know, you end up with a company that basically has no morality, it has no inspiration, it has no energy. It's just people basically going through their ro roles every single day. Nobody cares because they don't think that anyone up above them cares. And that happens often. That is a reality. Every business that doesn't have someone up at the top who really shows that they care about the employees will fail, will fail, and they would probably fail quickly. That's why I enjoyed the show. I think it was uh, Undercover Boss. I enjoyed that show because you had people 
who basically went undercover and they went out and met the employees without the employees knowing who they were. And they saw what was going on. And a lot of those people changed their demeanor and said, wow, I never realized that this is what we were putting on people. We're giving them stuff that is inefficient. It doesn't help them do their jobs. We've given them goals that are unacceptable. They can't reach them without violating some of the principles that we thought we were putting through. Yeah, organizational leadership, it does trickle down. It needs to flow down. There needs to be a company culture or organizational culture where you put, I'll say, employees first, then customers. Because if you don't put your employees first, then your employees won't put the customers first. To me, that is just one of those golden rules that makes a lot of sense. Remember, if you're on an airplane, they tell you to put your own mask on before you try to help someone else. Think about that a little bit. Anyway, my name is Mitch Mitchell. Let me know what you think about this principle, and I'll talk to you all next time.